This is a full guide to filing taxes as head of household. So if you are head of household or you are considering to be a head of household this year, you might want to watch this show to the end because I'll be sharing with you a lot of tips, a lot of hacks, a lot of uh, tricks that will really help you file your taxes properly. So here's an overview I want you to pay attention to. So when we talk about head of household, this filing status offers more generous tax brackets and standard deduction than filing single when maintaining a home for a qualifying person. So that's the key word here, qualifying person. So qualifying persons can include a child or other dependent who meets certain eligibility criteria. I'll speak about that later on. So heads of household have to pay more than half of the cost of keeping up a household and be considered unmarried on the last day of the year. And uh, head of household can also provide for higher income limits for certain tax credits. So what is the head of household filing status really? So head of household filing status typically allows parents or adults with qualifying dependents who provide over half of the cost of keeping up a home for a qualifying person to claim a higher standard de uh, deduction and be taxed at lower tax rates than single taxpayers or those who are married filing separately. So there are some advantages to filing as head of household. So basically you have two primary benefits. So you, you are actually more taxable income falling into lower tax brackets and you also have a higher standard deduction. Okay. And if you file actually as a head of household, your taxable income will typically be taxed at a lower rate than you would filing a return as a single or as married filing separately. For example, uh, in this, uh, in actually in the year 2023, but it will be the same for 2024, by the way, the 12% tax rate applies to single file, uh, single filers with taxable income from 11,000 up to, uh, 44, thousand seven hundred twenty five dollars and taxable income above this is taxed at 22 percent you, you, you can see the delta 12 percent all the way to 22 percent if you qualify to file as a head of household you can have taxable income from uh, fifteen thousand seven hundred dollars up to fifty nine thousand eight hundred fifty dollars before moving out of the 12 percent tax bracket and into the 22 percent tax bracket that's a huge delta for example, if your taxable income is, let's say, $50,000, filing as a head of household results in $620 less in federal income taxes compared to filing as single. So that's a huge gap, okay? So the oh, bottom line here is that uh, it, it is really uh, pretty uh, beneficial to file as a head of household if you do qualify. Boss, welcome back to the show. It's really a pleasure to have you here. Make yourself comfortable. You are going to enjoy today's conversation. I want to go granular here. So what are the requirements that you need to really uh, fulfill to qualify as a uh, head of household? So to qualify for cert for head of household, you have to meet certain criteria and the IRS changes the rules every now and then. So, but as of today, to file as head of household, you have to pay more than half of the household expenses. So that's the first criterion. You have to be considered unmarried on the last day of the tax year. Number two, and number three, you have to have a qualifying child or dependent. So this, this is the trifecta that really underlies uh, the head of household filing status. And so this tax filing status includes single parents and divorced or legally separated parents with custody of the child. Furthermore, you can also be an adult who provides support for a parent or other relative under qualifying circumstances. So this is kind of important. So what I'm talking about, you must be unmarried on the last day of the tax year or considered unmarried. This is important because marital status is always determined on the last day of the taxable year. So if you weren't married during the year or are legally separated, divorced or separate maintenance at midnight on December 31st, you are considered unmarried in the IRS, our IRS's eyes. So to file as a head of household and are considered unmarried, you need to file a separate return from your spouse you need to live apart from your spouse during the last six months out of the tax year. Temporary absences such as uh, a job assignment, military deployment, or a temporary incarceration usually, usually still count as living together. And number two, you must have paid more than half of the cost of maintaining a household for the year. So, basic, so basically, the cost within a taxable year used to make this uh, determination include the rent, I mean your rent, mortgage interest, real estate taxes, insurance on the home, 
property taxes, repairs, utilities, grocery expenses, and so on and so forth. You cannot count the following expenses, clothing, education, medical treatment or medical insurance premiums, vacation, life insurance, restaurant expenses, mortgage principal, transportation, rental value of the home, services provided by you or other members of the household. So if the total amount paid is more than the amount others paid, including government assistance programs or child support, then you meet the requirement of paying more than half of the cost of maintaining the household, of the, uh, household for the year. And you must have maintained a household for a qualifying person. So basically, when we talk about qualifying person, we're talking about uh, somebody, somebody who meets their qualifying child or relative test. So relationships include your qualifying child, such as your son, daughter, grandchild, adopted child, eligible foster child, or stepchild, who lives with you with more than uh, with uh, will lives, lives with you more than half of half the year and meets other requirements. Your qualifying relative, who is your father or mother, and meets other requirements. And a qualifying relative other than your parents, such as the grandparents, brother or sister, who meets other requirements, including living with you more than half the year. Boss, I want to quickly remind you of today's topic. We are having a conversation about a guide to filing taxes as head of household. Let me give you a bonus here. Here are some financial benefits for head of household. Basically, the thing here is that with the rules uh, related to head of household filing eligibility, it's important to understand that there is a good reason why you might want to qual- you might want to file as head of household. First of all, you have lower tax rates. I think I said this before, but now I'm going granular here. You have higher standard deduction rates. This is kind of important. So when we talk about lower tax rates, I think I've already given you uh, some kind of explanation here. So basically. Filing as, as a head of household often benefits you more from uh, favorable uh, tax rates and other filing statuses. Okay, so when you are in a lower tax bracket, it can reduce your overall tax liability and maybe even the amount of taxes you owe. And the cool thing we love here is that we have seen this across all the 50 states. So whatever uh, deduction you actually uh, benefit from, I mean, whatever deduction you can actually avail yourself of, uh, yourself of at the federal level. You can still you, you can still parlay those the benefits also at the state level. In other words, you there is a great chance that you qualify you will qualify for the state for the for the same tax benefits at the state level as well. You also have higher standard deduct, uh, standard deduction rates, so this is kind of a, this is really good, and uh, so it's really good. Now, if you want to have more information, it's just better to read uh, IRS Publication Five Hundred One Exemptions Standard Deduction and Filing Information. Now, can two people claim head of household? This is those. Are, this is a question that we actually have uh, been getting from our uh, our, our friends and uh, our, our viewers. So there cannot be two head of uh, households per household. Okay, this is because of the requirement that the head of household paid more than fifty percent of the total household expenses. So two people in one household cannot be both. I mean, they cannot both pay more than fifty percent. This is mathematically uh, impossible. So there can be two households per home though. This scenario works if both taxpayers paid more than 50% of the qualifying expenses of their of their re- respective households, okay? So this is totally possible. So I want to really dig a little deeper here. So what is the approach that we really, we need to pay attention to? What is required for maintaining a household? Now, the first requirement for filing as a head of household is that you paid more than half of the cost involved in maintaining a qualifying household during the tax year, right? This means what? It means that you paid more than half of the total household bills, including what I just said earlier, right? Rent or mortgage, utility bills, insurance, property taxes, groceries, repairs, and and other common household expenses. In the case of a parent, your parent doesn't need to live with you but you pay at least half the cost of their living arrangements. If you receive financial assistance towards your household expenses from a parent or other individual, you can still qualify to file as head of household as long as you are paying more than 50% of the bills with your own earnings, savings, or capital. And uh, so what does considered unmarried mean for for head of household filing status? Well, it just means that, I mean, the IRS has, and the IRS has been very clear over the years that basically all taxpayers who file as a head of household 
need to be considered unmarried as of the last day of the tax year. So to be considered unmarried means what? You file a separate return. You paid more than half of the cost of keeping up your home for the for the tax year, and your spouse did, did not live in the home during the last six months of the tax year. This is important. And your home was the main home for your child, stepchild, or foster child for at least six months of the tax year, and you are able to claim the child as a dependent unless the only reason that you can't claim the child is because the non-custodial parents can claim the child under certain rules. And those rules need to be clarified also with the, with the IRS, but also at the state level. Keep in mind that uh, if you and your spouse lived in a, separate, in a separate home due to a temporary circumstance, such as military service, business trips, or a stay in a medical or tra treatment facility, or attendance at, at college, the IRS still considers you married for that tax year. So this is uh, one of those things where people are, are sometimes confused about uh, the uh, the significance or let's say the meaning of uh, marriage under, I mean, married for that tax year under the IRS uh, views. So this, those are things you need to really pay attention to. So what is a qualifying child, you might actually ask. The eligibility of a qualifying child or dependent extends just beyond your own son or daughter. To be considered a qualifying child, the child might have to meet the criteria in each of the following categories. And, and I want to be really clear here. The child is your biological or adopted child, stepchild, foster child, sibling, step-sibling, half-sibling, or a descendant. In other words, a child, a grandchild, a great-grandchild, etc., of one of those uh, relatives the child the child lived with uh, within your home for more than six months during the tax year the child needs to be younger than you as of the, the end of the tax year the child is under 19 if he's not a student or under 24 if he's a full-time college student and the child did not pay more than half of their living expenses during the tax year now all those five conditions must be met simultaneously okay so you can't say, well, you know, I'm, I'm at four and then uh, I didn't meet the last one. No, you have to meet all those five simultaneously. In some cases, you may be eligible to file as head of household, even if you are unable to uh, claim your child as a dependent for divorced or separated parents. If the child lived in your home for more than half a year, you may file as head of household, even if the, the, the divorce or separation agreement gives the other parents the right to claim the child as a dependent. So those are special circumstances that we have to really sort of uh, pay attention to. Now, what is a qualifying dependent? If your dependent does not meet the, the criteria to be a qualifying child, you may still qualify to file as head of household. The following relatives are considered qualifying dependents for the head of household filing status as long as you provide more than half of the cost of maintaining the home and they live with you for more than half of the year. So your biological or adopted child, stepchild, foster child, sibling, step sibling, half sibling, or a descendant. I think I've said this before. Your step parents, niece, nephew, a sibling of one of your parents, or your son-in-law, daughter-in-law, parent-in-law, mother-in-law, brother-in-law, or sister-in-law. So even if your parents did not live with you for more than uh, for more than half of the tax year, you may still qualify to file as head of household. If you paid more, if you paid for more than half of the cost of maintaining a home. As your parents main home throughout the entire tax year and you are eligible to claim them as a dependent then you may be able to file as head of household this can also reduce a care facility where they live uh, this can also include rather a care facility where they live during the year boss i want to quickly remind you of today's topic we are having a conversation about uh, a guide to filing taxes as a as a head of household So let me give you a few extras here before we actually move a little further. Now, how does the head of household status compare to other filing statuses? Let's, quick, let's quickly have a, a compare and contrast so we have a clear idea. Let's talk about head of household versus single. Head of household filers can have a lower tax, taxable income and greater potential refund than when using the single filing status. The head of household filing status can claim a roughly 50% larger standard deduction than single filers and the heads of household can also use wider tax brackets that, are, that allows more of the taxable income to fall into lower tax brackets. What about head of household versus married filing jointly? 
while joint fathers cannot file as heads of a household but receive better standard deduction amounts as well as wider tax brackets. Joint fathers have a standard deduction twice as large as single fathers and, ru and roughly 33% larger than head of household filing status. What are the tax brackets for the head of household filing status? Well, head of household filers have more generous tax brackets than single or married filing separately filers. Okay, so it's always important to, if you want to have uh, more information about the head of household tax brackets and rates, it's just better to go to the IRS website and you have all the information there. And in terms of uh, two people filing uh, head of household on their return, this is totally impossible. We've said this before because of the requirements, it, the mathematical requirements to have at least at least, I mean, not at least more than 50% to like to provide more, more than 50% of uh, the expenses to sort of qualify. So mathematically, this is uh, this is uh, just impossible for two people to actually qualify for head of household uh, filing. So can you claim your boyfriend, let's say your boyfriend or girlfriend, as a, de as a dependent and head of household? Well, the, the, the question is really interesting because even if your boyfriend or girlfriend meets the IRS definition of qualifying relative dependent, you still cannot use the head of household filing status because this person is not related to you in their required ways. Very important. This person is not required to you in their required ways. And the thing here is that... Uh, you, you have to really see what really works for you. Maybe you get married a, a, a little faster to sort of qualify. And uh, so, and can you claim head of household and not claim a dependent? Generally, you need to have a qualifying child or, or dependent claim on your return as a, as a dependent to file using the head of household status. However, if you are a custodial parent, you may be eligible to file using the head of household filing status if you can't claim the child as a dependent only because the non-custodial parents can claim the child when meeting these rules. So, you are unmarried or considered unmarried on the last day of the other year. The child receives over half of their support from the from their parents. The child is in the custody of one of, of one or both parents for more than half of the year. You sign a written declaration that you will not claim the child as a de, as a dependent for the year, and the non-custodial parents include includes it with their tax return. So, okay, so this is kind of important. And uh, so the bottom line here is that uh, head of household filing status really helps a lot. And you have to be in a situation where, of course, the, the requirements are kind of strict. You have to meet those requirements. But if you meet them, the, the benefits are really galore. You can basically uh, have a larger standard deduction. You can have also uh, a you can fall into lower tax brackets and uh, you basically are able to uh, pay lower taxes. I mean, you know, that, that's the bottom line. But the thing here is that just make sure that you pay attention to uh, the people you are claiming as, as dependent, that they do qualify because the IRS has been known in the, in the, in the last few years to actually uh, do random audits, especially when we're talking about very high in income, uh, high income levels to really see, to make sure that those dependents really do qualify as uh, to be, to be claimed as, as dependent. Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. In today's conversation, I was giving you a quick guide to filing taxes as a head of household. So I give you the overview, the requirements, the bonus, the approach, the extras, and uh, now I'm doing the recap. Thank you so much. God bless you. I'll see you next time. Until then, remember, stay marvelous.